Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yesh Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 9th of November. India's Environment Code bans firecrackers in places where air quality is poor. Christian girl forcibly converted and married to Muslim man in Pakistan is underage, informs medical board. And Indian artists applaud Biden Harris's US election win in unique way. And now for all the details. Indian Green Code, the National Green Tribunal, has banned the sale and use of firecrackers till 30th of November across the country where the average ambient air quality in November fell under the poor and above category. This comes at a time when the national capital's air quality remains severe for the fifth consecutive day on Monday and is witnessing a spike in the number of COVID-19 cases. Toxic smog hovering over the Indian capital reduced visibility drastically on Monday as residents struggled to make their way through the thick smog. The AQI Air Quality Index in Delhi stood at 481 on a scale of 500, indicating hazardous air quality, showed the U.S. Embassy. The air quality has worsened due to the unusually high fire emissions and no quick recovery is expected unless a drastic reduction in fire counts takes place, Suffer, India's main environment monitoring agency said in its daily bulletin. Two days, visibility is very low. What is happening to 200 meters? We don't know what we are doing. That's why we are also going to put a strobe light. And the wind is very much that our hands are jammed and hands are jammed. Meanwhile, India's Environment Court, NGT, the National Green Tribunal pronounced a total ban on sale or use of firecrackers in Delhi till 30th of November to reduce pollution in the city as the festival of lights Diwali nears. The NGT order further said that the ban will be applicable in cities and towns where the air quality is in poor category. And since many states have taken this kind of order, and then there is a Calcutta High Court order, तो उन सारे के लाइट में और फिर जो एम्बिएंट एयर क्वालिटी का जो चल रहा है स्थिति उनके आलोक में ये आज के आदेश एनजीटी की तरफ से पारित किए गए एट अ टाइम व्हेन द नेशनल कैपिटल इज विटनेसिंग अ स्पाइक इन द नंबर ऑफ कोविड-19 केसेस बर्स्टिंग ऑफ फायर क्रैकर्स कैन एग्रेवेट ब्रीथिंग इश्यूज ड्यू टू एयर पोल्यूशन इंडियाज टोटल केसेस ऑफ कोविड-19 इंफेक्शन सर्ज टू 8,553,000 657 and the death toll has mounted to 126,611. The total number of active cases stand at 509,673. India's Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan, who reviewed COVID-19 situation in nine states on Monday, emphasized on the increased need to promote COVID-appropriate behavior. In news from Pakistan. A medical board constituted to determine the age of Christian girl Arzu Raja, who was allegedly abducted before being forcibly converted and married to a Muslim man in Pakistan, informed the Sindh High Court on Monday that the girl is underage. Activist and lawyer Gibran Nasser, representing Arzu's parents, informed that medical reports submitted to the court proved that she is around 14 years of age. A division bench directed that she be taken to the shelter home and told police to proceed against her alleged husband for violating the Child Marriages Restraint Act. The court later adjourned the hearing for two weeks. Activists have long raised concern over rising cases of abduction and forceful conversion of girls from minority communities in Pakistan. Moving on. A massive protest was held by activists and locals in Pakistan's Karachi on Sunday against the rising human rights violations in Sindh province. The protesters raised pro-freedom slogans as they blamed Pakistani security forces for using enforced disappearances as a tactic to silence voice and struggle 
of Sindhi people. A massive protest was held outside the Karachi Press Club on Sunday against the Pakistani state and its security forces over the rising incidents of human rights violations in parts of Sindh province of Pakistan. Held under the banner of Sindhu Desh Freedom Movement, the protesters raised pro-freedom slogans and demanded release of hundreds of Sindhi political activists languishing in detention centers. The purpose of the demonstration was to raise the heinous practices of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings perpetrated by Pakistani security agencies to muzzle dissenting voices in Sindh. Sindhi activists have long been requesting the international community to take notice of violence against a peaceful struggle. They blame innocent Sindhi people are subjected to atrocities by Pakistani forces for raising their voices. In news from Afghanistan, a new report by the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction has said that Taliban's violence has increased by 50% in the past three months to the end of September when compared to the previous quarter, as the peace talks in Doha were at an impasse. A new report by the Cigar Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction has revealed that Taliban violence in Afghanistan has increased by 50% in the past three months as the peace talks in Doha were at an impasse. The report released on Saturday said that the Taliban violence drastically increased in Afghanistan during August, September and November. Quoting General Scott Miller, the commander of US and NATO forces in Afghanistan, the report said that continued violence has posed serious threats to the Afghan peace process. Also citing a senior official in the Pentagon, the report said that if Taliban failed to abide by its commitments in terms of fight against terrorism, the U.S.'s decision about troops' withdrawal from Afghanistan will be affected. On the civilian casualties, the report said though casualties are typically high in the third quarter of any year, this quarter's high figures are notable because they occurred during an ongoing peace process and despite Taliban commitments to reduce violence. In the latest, little progress has been made in meetings between Afghan government negotiators and the Taliban since the talks started on September 12. The negotiations have stalled over the basic framework of talks and an agenda still undecided. Both sides have routinely accused each other of upping hostilities and killing civilians. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. Bangladesh recently opened its first Islamic religious school for transgender students with a plan to start many more around the country and help the sexual minority group in the conservative, mainly Muslim-majority nation. Bangladesh opened its first Islamic religious school for transgender students last Friday with a plan to start many more around the country and help the sexual minority group in the conservative, mainly Muslim-majority country. Known as hijras in many South Asian countries, people belonging to transgender community are often banished from their homes at a young age. Deprived of any formal education, many of them survive by begging, selling sex or dancing at weddings. Around 100 students started with Quran recitation on the first day. The school, which is funded by a religious trust, will also teach vocational subjects in addition to Islamic studies. যে মহান আল্লাহ পাকের অশেষ রহমতে আমরা আজকে কুরআন শরীফের শিক্ষা নিয়েছি এই কারণে আমরা এখানে এসেছি আজকে এই কুরআনের শিক্ষাটাকে নেয়ার জন্য আমাদের জন্য বিভিন্ন জায়গায় বিভিন্ন রকম ভাবে অবহেলিত আমরা কিন্তু এখানে এসে আমাদের জন্য একটা মাদ্রাসা করে দেওয়া হয়েছে আল্লাহর কাছে লাখ লাখ শুকরিয়া আদায় করছি যে আমাদের জন্য একটা মাদ্রাসা করে দিয়েছে দি गवर्नमेंट এস্টিমেটস देयर आर अबाउट 10000 হিজরাস ইন বাংলাদেশ বাট রাইটস গ্রুপস সে the figure could be as high as 1.5 million in the country of more than 160 million people. Despite a landmark government's decision in 2013 to recognize hijras as third gender, they remain marginalized in a country where same-sex sexual activity is illegal. Moving on to news from Nepal. Activists staged a flash mob in Nepal's capital Kathmandu this past weekend against all kinds of sexual misconducts 
and drew attention of authorities towards rising rape cases across the Himalayan nation. They claimed that constitution of Nepal has also failed to address sideline groups of the society. Activists belonging to different communities in Nepal staged a flash mob against all kinds of sexual misconducts in the Himalayan nation over the past weekend. The youth holded placards with slogan reading you are a rapist and played traditional musical instruments and songs aiming to drag attention of authorities towards rising cases of rape and sexual misconducts across the country. They claim that incumbent constitution of Nepal has also failed to address sideline groups of the society and is largely vague. Actually, हमले संविधान लाई हिरने हो बने पनी बलात्कार को परिवास लाई हिरने हो बने पनी क्या चाहे महिला रा योनी को मत करा कानी आ रहूँ सा तोरा हमले समाज में हिरने हो बने तो कती जाना पुरुष आ रहूँ रा पुरुष भीतर नहीं इंटरसेक्शनल जी लाई हिरने हो बने समलिंगी पुरुष सुनूँ सा दिल लिंगी पुरुष सुनूँ सा वहाँ रुपने and bring culprits of various crimes to book at earliest. Several rounds of protests have been staged in the Nepali capital Kathmandu and other parts of the country as rape cases continue to rise and victims and their families are deprived of justice. More on news from Nepal. At a time when Nepal is witnessing record rise in its daily COVID-19 cases, Neighbouring India has yet again extended help of ICU ventilators to the Himalayan nation. This comes as hospitals in Nepal are facing shortage of beds and other necessary equipments while tackling the pandemic. As Nepal continues to report spike in COVID-19 cases, neighbouring India has extended a help of 28 ICU ventilators to the Himalayan nation to support its fight against the deadly virus. This comes as hospitals in Nepal were forced to turn patients away for want of beds and necessary equipments. Even authorities earlier advised people to visit hospitals only if their condition worsens. The ventilators were handed over by Indian Ambassador Vinay M. Quatra to Nepal's Health Minister Bhanu Bhakt Dhakal on Sunday. India had earlier also donated ventilators, COVID-19 test kits and medicines to the Nepali government to help in its efforts to control the infection. Nepal as of Monday morning reported 194,453 cases of COVID-19 and over 1,100 deaths related to it. Indian artists pay tribute to US President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris through art on Sunday. Kamala Harris made history by becoming the first woman, the first black person and the first Indian American to win the second highest US office. Indian artists pay tribute to U.S. President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris through art on Sunday. Renowned Sen artist Sudarshan Patnaik created a piece located on India's eastern Puri beach depicting Biden and Harris' faces with a congratulatory message reading, Congratulations, USA. In the northern Amritsar city, artist Jagjot Singh Rubel put his finishing touches on a painting with the portraits of all 46 U.S. presidents, including President-elect Biden. Democrat Joe Biden won the U.S. presidential election on November 7 after a beta campaign and a nail-biting vote count that lasted for days. Harris, 56, made history with her election as Biden's vice president, becoming the first woman, first black American and first Asian American to win the second highest U.S. office. This is a special sense which we have created to congratulate the uh, entire U.S. and the new president, uh, Joe Biden, and uh, with vice president. The mood in Thula Sendrapuram, located about 200 miles south of Chennai, where Harris's maternal grandfather was born more than a century ago, was festive as villagers burst firecrackers and offered prayers in a temple to celebrate her victory. Harris's maternal uncle Gopalan Balachandran, who lives in South Delhi, was elated by her win and said he would attend her swearing-in ceremony. Oh yeah, I'm planning to go to the swearing-in. Sandra's swearing-in is on January 20th. Oh, okay. I hope to be there. Oh, 
I'll go in December. Kamala Harris is the daughter of an Indian immigrant and a Jamaican-born father. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.